Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, and we're about to start a very exciting webinar today. Uh, first, I got to apologize. I woke up this morning. I'm a little bit under the weather. I've got a uh, got a cold and, and very very tired, but I'm going to try to keep the energy up. Uh, I've been very excited to to get this presentation together. We've got some very very good content. Now, before I get started, I can see there's still a few people coming on the line. We got quite a few people registered for this webinar. I'm excited for today's webinar. But I'd love to know where some of you guys are. Uh, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping items for. Uh, go to webinar the software we're using at the end of this webinar I'm going to ask and open up the floor for discussion and questions that you may have um, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and and vocalize questions or in the questions box and if you'd like to go ahead and type right now just let me know where you're at and I will answer some of the questions uh, at the end of the webinar just to get connected I see we've got well, we got GG from Phoenix. I'm going to be in Phoenix in a couple of weeks. I'm going to the local search summit. So, uh, if you get a chance, I would love to to meet you and, and go check out that summit. We got some LMS students there. Actually, I've got a uh, a student from Local Marketing Source. He's been with us for two and a half years. His name is Josh Nelson. He's speaking at the local search summit in Phoenix in a couple of weeks. And Josh started with Local Marketing Source, leaving a full time job. Uh, started with zero sales, and in a three or a two and a half year period, he got his business up to two and a half million dollars. And so that's the discussion that he's talking about at the local search summit: is how to build a seven-figure agency. Uh, Robert, you're from Ottawa. I was born and raised in Sudbury, Ontario, just down the down the road from you. I'm actually located just outside of Chicago now, but that's I love Ontario. Uh, we got, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Blaze from Roanoke, Virginia, and Pipa from UK, and Larissa from Maryland. Daniel, one of my favorite cities in the, well, I, I take that back. You're in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, I've never been to Vancouver, Washington, but Vancouver, Canada is, a, is one of my favorite cities. Scott from Sarasota. Uh, Gigi, just talking about, love Josh Nelson. Yeah, Josh Nelson's an awesome, awesome uh, individual. Uh, Mashesh from, um, wow, Toronto. Y you know, somebody from Toronto is not from Toronto when they say Toronto. <laughs> I spent six years in Toronto uh, after moving from Sudbury and then over to Chicago. And it's nice to see we quite a few people here on the line, but nonetheless, I'm going to get started here. Thanks for, for sharing some of that. Uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Scott Gallagher, and I'm a father, entrepreneur, adrenalist. I like to do different things like snowboarding and jumping out of planes. You see a picture of my uh, son there. But I did go to school. I spent a lot of money on, on education, got a specialty in marketing. And in 2005, I moved to the United States from Canada with not a lot of different things. And I started my agency, which is called One Marketing. In 2009, I got good at SEO, and I uh, was working in the courier industry and started a business called National Parcel Express, and I sold 80% of that company in 2010. Uh, in 2010, where uh, the company was doing uh, $1.1 million in sales inside of one year. Uh, now that company is doing uh, over 150,000 packages a year. Also in 2009, I founded Local Marketing Source, which what brings you guys here today, uh, and then that led me on to write my first book and and open up uh, some training and education. And albeit I spend more of my time in my agency on day to day, my real passion is doing what I'm doing right now, and that's just sharing information. I've got a lot of experience at different speaking events that are uh, that are out there. I enjoy speaking on stage and and whatnot. But moving on, so now you can decide whether or not you want to listen to me or not. I'll give you a second to click off if, if you don't, but today we're going to cover a few different things. I'm just going to quickly go over the three different pillars of local search. And the focus of today's webinar is on citations. That's pillar number two. What are they? We're going to look at a variety of different types of citations that exist, why they're important. I'm going to show you top citation sources. I'm going to show you how to manage citations, different reputations, and a discussion of duplicate 
content. And then I'm going to give you a link to a free marketing course that you can go ahead and register on. And then finally, um, any questions that you might have, and we will answer those and we'll allot uh, 30 to 40 minutes for that. All right, so the three different pillars of local search. We've got profiles, we've got citations, and we've got reviews. Now, we're talking about search marketing here, or some people call it search engine optimization. For those of you that don't know me, I differentiate myself. I try to distance myself with SEO. I have been for quite a few years. The reason is, in, in, in a nutshell, is that search engine optimization is the process of optimizing website to satisfy the needs of the search engines. That's not what I do. That's not what I teach. I'm not a fan of utilizing a whole variety of different tools, uh, albeit I'm a very analytical individual and I like data. Uh, I don't consume myself with uh, a lot of data that's out there. Now, taking a step back, I come from a marketing background. I've got 20 years of business to business sales experience. And the definition of marketing is creating content that resonates, that has value for an audience, which includes prospects and customers, and distribute that content to an area that these prospects and customers reside. That's all that marketing is. It always has been, and it always will be, well before the internet existed. Well, search engine optimization, all the different practices of search engine optimization that we learn about is exactly what marketing is, except in the SEO world, we've found ways to distribute that content that really doesn't have relevancy to an audience, but the search engines kind of like it because it creates the busy restaurant syndrome. So you're gonna you're gonna see some of this if you, if you haven't learned and, and understand some of the LMS flair, um, we're gonna we're, we're gonna share some of that and you'll be able to see some of that. But now we're gonna move on to pillar number two and talk about citations. Now with profiles, pillar number one, these are best practices of profiles that exist on a variety of different sites. We've got a webinar that exists. There is a public piece of content available on the local marketing source blog that you can go and watch. It discusses profiles as well as reviews. This is the final of the three on citations. Now, citations and links. They say the citations are the new link. Uh, links and citations, in my opinion, are the same. Um, they are just a merely an exposure of business properties out on the internet. So citations, when we talk about citations, what they are are web references. And the best way to get a web reference is with a link or and or with what we call a NAP or, you know, NAP stands for name, address and phone numbers. And there's a variety of different places that local businesses can go and get their business listed on different areas of the internet. And this might include data providers or public sources. We're gonna go over some of these in, in great detail. Uh, as well as we're gonna go over some different acquisition strategies to look at these different type of citations that might exist. So on that note, let's move forward and take a look at the different types of citations that exist out there. No, this is not like traffic citations. <laughs> but I should have animated this one. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to go through and I'm going to talk individually about the seven different types of local citations, which are public sources, data aggregators, local search engines and data providers, local based websites, which are like local based blogs and directories, theme based websites or industry based websites, different blogs and directories and a list of non-conventional citation ideas for local businesses. Now, I wanna talk about public sources first because it is an area that has a tremendous amount of authority. Now, authority is a very important word in the world of internet marketing. It's an element of trust and you can just think about it in the real world that uh, a doctor is an individual of authority when it comes to things that are wrong with our body. A chiropractor that has gone to school is an individual of authority that has to do with the spine and spinal manipulation. I might be a little bit of an authority when it comes to chiropractors, but not even remotely close to a doctor. 
but more than the average individual. So uh, there's there's different scales of authority of that w- that we've seen in, in, in the world and, and in history and whatnot. And that's the way it works on the Internet. And public sources have a tremendous amount of authority. In other words, when a business is cited on a website that has a higher authority to it, that that citation is going to have a lot more bearing on that business's ranking. There's many different cases I would sooner take one citation over a hundred or several hundred different citations. Uh, And we're going to see that in the different types of citations that may exist. So different sources of public citations of public sources. Now, if the business is a public organization, which not many local businesses have a public entity, but they are going to share the company annual reports, or you're going to be able to find information in the SEC information. I'm not going to get into great detail about that at this point in time, but the point number three, the federal, state, and city government uh, are, 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 are key elements. Now, these are .gov websites, and very often the consistency of your NAP, the way you've written your name, address, and phone number out, are not always the same and sometimes are completely wrong on government records. You'd be surprised at, at the different elements. And, and so when a business is registered, uh, initially registered at the different levels of, of government, um, you want to ensure the consistency of the NAP with either your clients or your local business. Business magazines. Uh, you'd be surprised how easy it is to get content written, especially when we start to talk about theme-related content and industry-related content. Almost every single industry that exists has magazines, uh, has conventions, national and state conventions and whatnot. Um, and, and to get content written in these national magazines is, is a matter of just creating content that really has value and submitting it to the editor. Uh, sometimes they'll have different themes and you'll want to plan yourself, but building a relationship uh, with with editors of these national industry-based magazines are extremely lucrative opportunities to get sources. And what happens is they publicate that online and your business is cited as the author. Uh, you know, yesterday's LMS call, we talked uh, all about um, authorship and how Google authorship has dropped, but author rank has not dropped at all. And the SEO industry right now is in an uproar or upside down because of authorship, but most people are missing the fact that author rank has not gone anywhere. It's only authorship. The means to embed content on HTML has is, is gone. But newspapers and local publications. Now, like <clears throat> doing a press release, uh, businesses have been doing press releases forever, and that's – that's getting newsworthy content from the business that the local community may be interested in and having a newspaper publish that content free of charge as a press release to say a few things have changed. Maybe you're dealing with different doctors and doctors uh, continually going back to school and get some additional education. Maybe a local business is expanding and opened up a second location just to demonstrate. Um, We're working on getting uh, content right into the Chicago Tribune for one of our clients that's the oldest taxi company in the country that's owned by a female. Um, You can really think outside of the box. And these types of of citations take a lot of work uh, to create a a press release and then build a relationship with with the editors of of these magazines and newspapers and distributing it and seeing when it's going to be published. But I assure you that that... That one citation is extremely, extremely valuable. Again, with the post office as well, uh, just make sure that your NAP consistency is is the same of what they have listed and and to be able to see if any type of public content that uh, the post service may have. And the post service is now getting into different types of uh, mailing campaigns and whatnot. So you'll want to contact your local post office box to ensure that their records of of the business um, has... uh, is in congruency with your strategies for your NAP. Now, a rule of thumb that I I tend to follow is our clients that spend $1,000 a month or more with my company are clients that we've got the time and the revenue to consider public sources. All right, I'm just going to check to make sure that there's no complaints about audio or anything like that. Uh, well, thanks, Lex, for 
Stefanoff and saying you're from Vancouver, Canada. Um, thanks, Gigi. I appreciate that. He says, well, Josh learned from you. So, Scott, you're even more awesome. I appreciate that. And I got George on the line, which is an LMS student um, from local, Windy City, wonderful city of Chicago. All right. Go back to PowerPoint here. Make sure my screen sharing is good. Now, data aggregators, all right? Data aggregators, they are in the business of collecting information and ensuring the accuracy of that information. That's what they do. Uh, this is what these guys hire people for. This is what they set out to do. And they collect data from a variety of different sources like phone books, uh, business groups, phone and banking records, uh, different databases from online business registrations online. So when you've got a person that is calling up a business just to verify their address and the authenticity of, of that business, at the same time, they are looking at phone records, uh, different business groups. They're looking at databases from business registrations. Their data and their data accuracy is solid. And so the major search engines in the United States, I, I can't speak around the world, um, but I would safe to say that in Europe, Canada, and Australia, follow this these exact four data aggregators as well because they are international organizations. Now, the major search engines pull information from these four data aggregators, and that's InfoGroup, Newstar, Axiom, and Factual. It's important to know and work with these data providers to ensure that their information that they have on file is exactly with what you want your NAP to be. Now, moving down the line in terms of authority and accuracy of information, we're going to move to local search engines and data providers. And obviously, there's a variety of different major search engines that exist. I'm not giving you guys the full list that, of everything that, that would be out there. I'm giving you the top of the lists. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is we only have one hour for this presentation, and I can spend an hour or two just talking about search engines and data providers. Uh, different search engines and data providers have different authority into different uh, localities. I will get into that and give you the tools on how to prioritize your list for your clients uh, moving forward. But just knowing that the, you know these are some of the major search engines. Of course, YouTube could be on there. They're the second largest search engine. Uh, different major data providers uh, in the United States would be Yellow Pages or UBL, as well as InfoUSA.com. Um, major data providers are competitors to data aggregators. They're just not as good in the eyes of the search engines. That's why we have to label them differently as major data providers. And again, the major data providers, uh, ensuring that if, if, if you've got accuracy within the four top data aggregators and three or four of the top data providers, you know, as well as InfoUSA maybe one, uh, Yellow Book would be another major data provider, you're going to have accuracy of information strong enough that the secondary data providers that do and collect their data and they scour the internet when you go and claim your listings, for example, you claim your listing at Yelp, um, which, you know, Yelp isn't even on this list. Just take a screenshot here. This is also being recorded for you guys. You guys are going to get access to the recording, uh, but not, not the live questions at the end. We do not record the live questions. All right, so moving on, we've looked at different types of data sources. We've looked at local data sources. Uh, sorry, not local. We've looked at public uh, citation sources. We have looked at the major data aggregators. And now we're looking at local search engines and data providers. Next, we're going to look at local-based websites. Now, 
local based websites are going to be websites that have to do with the local community. They may or may not have to do with the industry of the client that you may be working with. But the local search engines, of course, uh, you know, Google local or, or when Google shows its local results in its SERPs, that's the local search engine algorithm that's making calculations and embedding their results into the Google search engine. But with local-based websites, more so than local search engines, are local blogs. And you can go to Google and type in uh, a geomod or your geographical modifier, uh, your city name or zip code or whatnot, and blog after it. And you're going to get a list of local blogs. You're going to identify local blogs that would have relevancy, uh, you know, if you're dealing with chiropractors and there may be a local blog from a, a wellness mother. So your client who is a local chiropractor would, uh, you would, you would create content for this local mummy blog on behalf of your local chiropractic client and ask them to publish it. You can give them exclusivity on the content and if they don't publish it, you can move on. But identifying local authoritative sites and a little trick in Google, if you do a search for your geomod and blog, Google's going to prioritize the authority of all those blogs that show up because the number one site for such a refined small keyword, like in my city, Algonquin blog, there's not going to be very many bloggers in a town of 30,000. Now, I get into greater strategies and discussions on that in the organic SEO videos for any LMS students that are on the line right now. Of course, you can also do this for locally focused directories. You can use the same search term, geomod and directory, inside of Google. Uh, they are well indexed, and they're typically associated with a particular certain geographical area. Now, more so than just, I mean, local-based sites are, are important to have a, for you to establish your authority within a local community as a provider of information. The internet is just a means of providing information from one to another. So we're just trying to build that authority in a local world. Now, to increase your authority, you know, if you're a plumber, uh, Josh Nelson is out of Miami and deals with plumbers. And if you're a plumber and you want to establish authority as a good plumber, have other plumbers support your information. So that's why we focus in on theme-based sites. And this is another type of citation that you should be working on. Of course, when you're building your strategy, you're going to want to identify when and how many and what types of citations for each of these different categories. But all seven categories, you should be acquiring citations in all seven categories. And of course, you've got to manage all of this as well. But I'll get into that and talk about that a little bit further. But theme-based websites are going to focus in on keywords and different topics. So in my case of dealing with chiropractors, for example, uh, keywords are generally going to be different symptoms, conditions, and causes. That, that could also be applied to plumbers. The keywords are going to be relative to fixing a problem, fixing a leak. Of course, there's your core terms. Keyword is a discussion. Keyword discussion. God, the keyword world of search engine optimization and the education that's out there, in my opinion, is over the top, unbelievably messy. Uh, you want to get the top keywords for your clients. Without using the internet, you're going to get your best list because keywords are merely just us as marketers trying to get an understanding of what the general consumer population as on averages are going to utilize when trying to solve their problem. So they may have a toothache and you can grab a clipboard and go to your local mall and start interviewing people and hand them a clipboard and say with a phone, with a smartphone and say, hand them the phone. You keep the clipboard because you're collecting data. Hand them the phone and say, if you had a toothache, and you had to solve this tooth pain, and all you had was a smartphone in your hand, what would you do? 
and you would watch them go to Google and you would watch them type in a search phrase and that's your keywords right there. That's going to give you much more accuracy than any of the tools that exist out there because think about geography here for a moment, guys. One aspect of marketing, and remember, SEO is all effective marketing. One aspect about marketing, oh, I go on a tangent a little bit. You know, I go to these internet marketing conferences, and now they're talking about creating your avatars at an internet marketing conference. What the hell is creating your avatar, I think, in my head? So I go to this one hour, and it was a waste of my time. Because at the end of the day, all that they were teaching me was customer segmentation. And I was blown away at the internet marketing industry that they just started to figure out that, wait a minute, we've got to start segmenting our audience before we can start creating content that's relevant for them. Holy shit, that's the very first thing in Marketing 101 that they teach you when I went to university first year. Customer segmentation. And you segment your audience based off of different groups and you put them into different profile groups. Well, of course that's important. Of course it's important to understand who you're creating internet marketing content for. Take two chiropractors, for example. They go to the exact same schools, but one of them goes out into the marketplace and says, if you have back pain, I'm going to take care of you. And chiropractor number two turns out and says, I'm a wellness individual. Eat right, exercise, and get adjusted, and then you're going to live a life of wellness. One's like fixing a toothache, and the other one is like brushing your teeth for preventative maintenance. They're black and white. They're two very different positions from the same chiropractor. Uh, from the same chiropractic school. It's all about positioning. So chiropractor A and chiropractor B are going to create two different types of messages. They're going to have different types of signage on their windows. So segmenting a customer audience is extremely important, and that all comes down to keywords as well. you got geographical restraints within keywords. In the north, they say pop. In the south, they say soda. Between Canada and America, I lived in both different countries. Very, very different. What about all the different spellings of words like labor? Utilizing local jargon is very important when understanding keywords and tonality and whatnot. So understanding the audience. I'm sorry I digress, but getting back to theme-based websites here. Uh, you can also look for different small niche social sites that are within a specific area. There's a lot of different groups. I worked in the courier industry for a while. A lot of different courier groups that exist. They all get onto different forums. Uh, there's a variety of different directories. So you can utilize Google to Google your different theme-based keywords. These are your core modifying keywords. Maybe your core terms as well. And directory. Or blog. All right, let's take a quick little break here to grab some water. I uh, I get standing up when I'm talking. I get going. And definitely making my throat raw today. But we're going to move on now to some non-conventional citation ideas. And this is to get you guys to think outside of the box in terms of how to get exposure on the internet that has some some real relevancy to it and and real marketing that the real audience is going to come across and get engaged and ultimately funnel them back to your website to achieve the call to action and ask to pick up the phone make an appointment or pick up the phone and make a purchase when they need to or establish branding principles and ensure that your brand is inside their head when they make a decision so chiropractors, I, I work a lot with chiropractors, and one way that they teach in their schools to get them to get uh, new patients is to host local seminars or local events where the chiropractor talks for an hour and asks their patients to bring in family and friends. Well, we could leverage that to start hosting different parties and events because think of the Chamber of Commerce, for example. Every month, most Chamber of Commerce have either lunch and learns or meet and greets. And if you ask your client to host a meet and greet at 5 o'clock, 5 to 7 o'clock, that Chamber of Commerce 
is going to plaster that business name everywhere from their website to the local newspapers. You're getting all these free, awesome citations from authoritative sources just because you're hosting a party. If you've got clients that are in strip malls, get them to get a red box or an ATM around. If it's a retail location, get an ATM in there. There's apps that are out there on smartphones now. And I know the red box concept is a dying concept. Uh, but not so much with ATMs because there's apps that say, you know, find me the nearest ATM and boom, we'll come into that location, which means you're registered on different websites. Not a heck of a lot of authority, but this next one has a tremendous amount of authority. If your client or your business is in an old building, get registered with the NRHP. That's the National Registry of Historic Places. It's a .gov site. It's a government-based website, highly authoritative. Now, again, I work with dentists, attorneys, chiropractors. They all went and spent a lot of time in school. And in school, they wrote a lot of papers. I could slap those together and produce a book, get that book through createspace.com. I'm now listed on Amazon.com as a published author with an ISBN number. Dr. Jill Howe wrote this book. She didn't even do any typing. You're not gonna really turn around and start promoting and selling that book. You're not in the business of book distribution and sales, but the idea is to build some authority and a chiropractor that has a published book that's linked to Amazon with an ISBN number, you drive reviews, you could print that and, and, and sell that book. You could also utilize that book as an opt-in on your client's website to capture email addresses to help upsell the email marketing service. A lot of different ways to get citations by writing a book. If your clients have a waiting room, offer free Wi-Fi and get that free Wi-Fi listed on free Wi-Fi sites. It's just additional exposure. Now, a violation of Google's terms and conditions is to pay for citations or links. I never will teach or recommend or employ strategies inside my agency that are a violation of any of the major search engines. Never. Trust me, it doesn't work. Uh, it may seem easier, but it doesn't work in the long run. I try to build a business with long-term value that have customers for a long time. I don't want customers for six months. So while I don't support paying for exposure, if perchance I gave a $50 donation to the local school because they had, they were raising money and then they published my business name on their website as a thank you, I'm just donating money for a good cause. But I'll tell you, that's worth $50 citation. <laughs> so you as a marketer, look for opportunities that are inexpensive sponsor opportunities that you're gonna get online exposure for. A lot of the clients that we deal with could have the potential of selling products. A lot of them sell products in their back end, just behind their counter. They don't push it, it's not a core aspect of their business. But the moment that you start and have the ability to sell online, you're creating additional exposure again for each of the products. Every even within WordPress, there's, there's simple plugins to get in. It gets a little bit dicey, a little bit hairy when you start to integrate uh, payment gateways. But I don't recommend for local businesses to engage with online payment gateways. Just fill out forms to make a purchase and, and close the transaction with a phone call. 
but it's going to give exposure that's out there and value. Of course, additional content on your website. This is becoming more and more relevant, and we're trying to ident identify different ways to leverage a variety of different check-ins to create exposure that exists. Creating check-in deals, for example, if you're a destination local business and people come to you, you can absolutely encourage check-ins. Maybe not so much for attorneys. Uh, clients of attorneys are not going to, uh, you know, want to check in to say that they're there. But my chiropractor is such a warm place to go to that I'm happy to do that as a consumer to check in. And if my chiropractor encouraged me to check in further while I was there, it's only going to help the rankings and the exposure of, of that business. There's a lot of ways to really think about that. We're, we're toying with different integration ideas for, uh, well, take, take like an electrician, okay, or a taxi service or a plumber. And that plumber goes and checks in at, the place that they provided service for. That's integrated to the plumber's website that a consumer, a potential consumer can go there and see where that plumber has done work. And when they roll their mouse over where they've done work, they're able to see reviews from each specific local location. You see how this is bringing stuff together? What's the number one form of marketing that has always existed well before the internet? That's word of mouth. So check-in deals are a means to generate digital word of mouth conversation and chatter. The world is much more connected now and much closer. Um, if you got the money and you're a tech geek, you can get a weather monitoring station on the top of your building and get listed on different sites there. I got this one crossed out because it is a way to get exposure, uh, but it's not something that I would ever recommend any one of my clients for, and I wouldn't want one of my building, but that's a small cell tower, believe it or not. Webcam. Stream and live webcam on the website of the office. You get some interesting exposure and maybe some fans and maybe some freaks. <laughs> you know all right so I'm gonna show you a link here in a moment it's gonna pop up now type that into your browser that's gonna bring you to Moz and they've just recently done a study I've pulled in my case here identify the studies that are the top citation sources for all of your industries all, all excuse me all the different industries that are out there and take that data that you find with that and relate it to the content that I was teaching about theme-related sites. And then for locations, and again, in my scenario here, you're going to find a variety of differences. There's a few things that we were able to learn when we did this and, and this data was released. Was the authority of Yelp in Chicago and for chiropractors? So that guides us. To help create our plan there's nothing that we do as cookie cutter for any one of our clients every client is different but just like that expression you can give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day and you teach a man how to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime that anything that's cookie cutter is merely just giving you a fish to eat when we start talking about real marketing principles like segmentation and understanding customer audiences and in creating content that's relevant for that audience and then distributing it to where it's relevant. We just got to know different areas and how to de determine what is relevant and what's not relevant. That's why I prioritize the seven different categories for you. Okay. Now, uh, another major topic for these services are and, and dealing with citations is duplicate citations. Now, I don't have time to get into the great detail. I've got a variety of different content 
that discusses how to handle duplicate content and how to remove it. Not duplicate content, sorry, I'm talking about duplicate listings. If you go to a tool, uh, if you type in moz, M-O-Z, dot com slash local, uh, there's a little tool in there uh, that will will talk about the different exposure that, that exists. And within that, it's going to identify for you duplicate listings. I want to emphasize right now that if you have any duplicate listings, they've got to be removed. There's a lot of different little tricks as well to identify different duplicate listings that these tools are not going to find because tools are only so good. They try to develop tools that work for everybody. But remember, there's culture involved. I was just at an address that was 220 E Ave S T A W. So it was 220 East Avenue, East Avenue A West Street. I couldn't figure it out. But the people of Owen Sound explained to me the way the city was set up and the way different things ran different ways. You had numbers in between of streets and avenues and streets and avenues running different ways. And the east and the west was a directional thing. And then I told you, and I was like, holy shit. All right, I get it now. It made sense. Um, but Google doesn't understand that. The town is only 2,200. And... If Google doesn't understand it, then other mapping tools don't fully understand it either. They actually, and we tried it. We sat down on a computer and it kept sending me to one of the streets that didn't have the W in front of it, uh, nonetheless. So duplicate listings, you know, you can go to Google, you type in every variation of your nap as possible with the quotations around it in Google. And then that's going to identify for you all the different exposures that are going to exist for listings and you want to get uh, fixed up. So um, I'm going to spend five minutes now, guys, and go through uh, the offer. We've given you 45 minutes of time right now for education. I'm going to spend five minutes just to let you know a little bit about what local marketing source is. Then I'm going to give you a link to uh, the free marketing course that you can sign up. You can get in. You can see the portal. Uh, the, the marketing course is great. It's got um, some really, really good free fundamental marketing principles. I put every LMS student through that uh, from the beginning before they start anything. Uh, it's content that comes out of college level marketing classes, it's it's important. Uh, if you're not involved with it, I do want you to sign up and go through it. Uh, but I definitely do want to earn the right to your business as well. So we have a lot more content inside of Local Marketing Source. But the LMS membership gives you access to all of the videos that are in there. You're going to see that there's over 100 different uh, training videos. We have monthly webinars. Uh, we've got a whole archived aspect of questions and answers. When you do get the videos, you can print up the transcripts of them all. So every video is, is completely scripted. Uh, you can write your notes along with it. Uh, most students print it up and, and, and create a book that they go along with it and read. That's going to give you the highest retention. You get some work. There is a couple of different workbooks that are involved. And you get all the management files. There's a tremendous amount of value in this. Every single file management, there's over 60 files that I use in my agency from proposal templates to contracts to operational templates to cash budgets, uh, the list goes on of a variety of different management files that you get, that you get access to all the time. Now, the, I, I feel like the greatest value of the membership is the private Facebook group. Um, we've got a variety of different members that are in there. It's a very, very active group. The questions are just awesome. It's a constant stream of learning. And it's very, very active. The LMS community, I am just so happy with. We're, we're just such a bunch of good individuals. And then, of course, you get access to the weekly uh, member calls. Once a week, we get on, talk about and digress what happened in the last week, any of the top news for local, what things have changed, algorithms, and, and all that stuff. I, I, read, I read my coffee. <laughs> I read my news in the morning while I drink my coffee. And then uh, once a week, deliver everything that I've found. Uh, based off of all the different sources that I, I frequent. 
You also get uh, student hot seats. Uh, these are students that we put on the pedestal, and they talk about their experiences, and other students ask them questions. What have you done? How did you do it? Uh, Josh has been on the hot seat twice in the last two years, and uh, now he's doing interviews and, and whatnot. So some of the reasons why you might want to get this depending on where you're at. We've got individuals that uh, come from, uh, well, they went to school to become an attorney. Now they want to become an internet marketer and they're fresh and new into it, all the way to established agencies. Uh, Josh is still a paying member. He's you know doing $3 million a year. Uh, we have Nick Dale. Uh, he just came back um, to rebuild his agency after going into the corporate world for a little while. Uh, you, you know, there, this this program is available to all levels of internet marketing in your agency, from the beginner to the advanced individuals, because you do get ongoing support with all of this. Uh, whether your questions are going to be answered by the LMS community or, of course, the LMS faculty, and we do provide fresh content weekly. Uh, monthly with webinars, um, continually we're trying to always bring in the most relevant content that's available to the local internet marketing community. And finally, of course, as you know, uh, we're not just trying to train here. We do do this for a living. So just the, some of the areas that you're going to get access to content to. I mean, this is straightforward. This list can go on and on and on. you got to remember that there's over 100 different over 100 different videos uh, that are available. Um, now, I could probably log in and show you guys the portal here. Um, give me one moment if you'd like to see this. While we're doing that, what's going on here? Just finish this last slide and we'll, we'll listen to a quick little video here. Something's going on with my audio. Give me one quick second here. Not one quick second, but there we go. We're going to play a video here. And it's probably going to jump me over to YouTube, so I will do this. I've taken on client after client after client since then, and now I have not even advertised myself. All my business now is referral business. What I liked about Scott was real solid principles for an ongoing business. I had the course in my hands physically for about two weeks, and already I've got two clients from just using the information in Module 1. Uh, I had uh, five clients and that allowed me to uh, quit my job. Uh, I was able to go out and get my first client within the first few weeks. You know, because I'm only on module two, but I only needed up to module two to get going. And the thing that I got from Scott was you don't need to learn everything straight away. The most important thing you do is to go out and get your first client. And so Scott's course really gave me that confidence. Awesome. All right. While we were listening to that, I was able to log into the forum. We'll just give you a quick little rundown of what you're able to see here. Also, uh, before we do that, because I mentioned to you that the Facebook group is awesome. You know, we'll log into Facebook here, and once you get access and you get in, you can get it like, and you can see here, Ed just popped in here and said something. Uh, George, I think George is on the line right now. Um you know, I posted something, and this is all just yesterday. George is talking about a lavalier mic and wanted information on it. Tisha likes to share, you know, some of the stuff that she likes to find. Uh, Nick, he's he's our uh, New Zealand student. He's been around. He's rebuilding his agency and asking for questions. Let's see, look at quite a few different comments here. So that's our Facebook group. But this is the portal here of all the different... Uh, products that we have you do get access to everything um, this course here marketing fundamentals is the free course so when you get access you can sign up for this today for no cost we don't ask for your credit card or anything 
uh, but it gets into you know different concepts and primers and uh, I'd mentioned to you segmentation we've got that in there uh, that talks about different email marketing finding your customer segment as a video on customer segmentation and just like all the different videos even all the paid videos you get access to your PDF transcript so you can print this up for every single video and then over here uh, all of our member calls for all the different months and different years you can go back local SEO sections Different online marketing, all broken down, SEO, backlinks, conversion. Building your business, building your agency. This is growing your agency. It's not executing the services. But even when we click on a particular tab here just for local SEO, you can see there's a variety of different videos that are getting into reviews and extensive, extensive. Okay, now just a little bit quicker here, guys. Just some of the support that you're going to get um, with all the video training and whatnot that you receive. You know, you can stream it onto your laptops, your tablets, your smartphones. You can download the MP3s. You can get the transcripts of it uh, and all of all the different working documents that are available. The live weekly training, the phone support. We have an 88 number that you can call and leave a message at at any point in time. We utilize Zendesk for support management. Uh, we are responsive within 24 hours for that. And... You can email us. That's our least preferred way of communicating with us. You can communicate with us through the private Facebook group as well. Now, with this webinar here, uh, if you decide to go ahead and make a purchase with this course today, I'll give you the price in a moment. It's a lot less than what you think it is. Um, you're going to get a consultation with me. Now, everybody that's taken this has been, wow, this is great, great, great value. Uh, we just sit down for a little bit, talk about where you're at, and try to put a little bit of a plan together to get your business running and uh, moving forward in the next six months. Okay, great. You can get a copy of my book that I'll, I'll send you. I'll also give you my email address and my phone number, um, my cell phone number if you ever wanted to call for whatever reason. And now, what is this going to cost and why do you want to buy it right now? It's 100 bucks a month. That's it. With that, of course, you're going to get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's no reason why you don't get in and see it. Our retention at Local Marketing Source, I am extremely, extremely proud to say that our retention is very, very high. Our refund rate is extremely low comparative to the Internet marketing community. I'm very, very proud of, of those numbers. We work very, very hard to satisfy our needs. If you don't think this is a fit, please don't go through it. We don't want to have to, you know, we, we want people that really believe that they're going to get value from this. Give it a shot. If they enjoy it and they feel like it's worth $100 a month, they stay. And they stay with us for quite some time because they realize the value that we help them build this business. All right. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. When version three comes out, the price is going to go up. When, when, what's this and that? We know that stuff. All right, so there's the link to go and get the membership right now. Okay, you can sign up, you can get in and get into the live group and get access to this content immediately. So once again, there's the link to sign up for the LMS membership. Here's the link to sign up to the free course. Either which way, Take one of these call to actions today. If you haven't signed up for the free course, get in there. Bitly slash LMS underscore MKTG underscore course. So on that note, guys, I'm going to go ahead and open the floor to any questions that we may have. And Vaughn's asking for, which do people search for, city and keyword or keyword and city? Well, um, 
with all due respect, Vaughn, I'm got the deer and headlight look with that question. Uh, you know, guys, there are there is so much education out in the internet marketing world that I can I can tell with when I get asked questions from people, I can tell whether you've had experience in different areas and, and whatnot. Now, I'm not suggesting or making assumptions about Vaughn here. I, I can't tell with this particular question, but it's making me think and lead into it. And Vaughn's asking here, you know, what do people search for more? City and main keyword or service or the other way around, the reversal of that? You know, the first thought that pops into my head is, is relevancy. What's the relevancy of that? There's zero relevancy of that. If he had that data, that data is never, ever, ever, ever going to help him out. Because it makes no difference if we knew one was searched more than the other. There, there's not one conceptual reason why I can think about why I would like to know one combination of a keyword is different than the reversal of it. Now, I know a lot of you on the other end are sitting there going, well, well I don't know, Scott. Prioritization of keywords, search volume, you know. Well, I can get into a whole dissertation and a whole argument of that. You can't give me an argument and tell me honestly with your eyes closed and say, do you think a search engine is going to determine relevancy different between one combination over another? No, they're not. The fact of the matter is, is, if a consumer goes to a search engine and types in a city name and then a keyword, or a keyword and then a city name, they're trying to find the identical information, at least in the business of local internet marketing. Jeff is asking, what is the best way to corrupt NAC? Ugh. What is the best way to correct NAP mistakes and duplicates? Well, Jeff, I can talk for an entire hour on, on that. I've got an entire presentation that discusses how to handle duplicate listings and how to handle NAP mistakes. Uh, there is not one best way to be able to handle it. Uh, maybe the answer to the best way is to follow a process. Uh, the first step of the process is to utilize the tools that exist. The tools that we use are bright local or white spark or Moz to identify duplicate listings. The next step uh, is doing some manual searching. And I briefly talked about that. Um, but again, there's quite a bit that's that's involved with, with that as well. I can show you, for example, whoops, no, I don't want to cancel the webinar. So I would type in, I would type in, um, So I just randomly pulled a number up. This is specifically where I am right now. Um, Google took that and, and mapped it for me and then found a listing on Brown Book and found a listing on our main website. So I would look at this, go here. Okay, well, based off of this search here, Google is giving authority to Brown Book. I can take my competitors, do searches for that, and then find citations that they have that are higher of authority, and Google has ranked them an authority. Interesting one here, an Atlanta-based website. 
There's a citation. So I hope that helps as well. Jeff is asking, can a dental practice have a separate listing for the practice and each dentist? Well, yeah, this, this is, again, this is where some of this content of duplication, uh, it gets, gets very, very relevant. Jeff, it sounds like that you are dealing with this. Uh, perhaps you've got a dentist for it. I encourage you to drop the hundred bucks today to get in and become a member and look at some of this content. Uh, because we just go, we just went through it. We just had some very, very fresh content on it. If you're not happy with it, refund your money. Get your hundred bucks back. Um, what do you got to lose with that? But I get into great detail with it. I've got slides that are involved with it, uh, and and essentially with duplicate listings, it's a violation of the terms and conditions of Google to have multiple listings for one physical address. Now they've announced an exception for multi-practice attorneys and multi-practice uh, medical individuals. So dentist practices work into that way. In addition to that, Google has recently created a business page and a dentist page. And those are things that you've got to get in alignment. Um, I'm working with a chiropractor that has got four different, four different doctors, but only Two of the doctors have have listings, and one of the listings is from a doctor that doesn't work there anymore. Um, so yeah, you've got to get that in alignment. The dental practice, you've got it. There is going to be a separate listing for the practice and each dentist. Uh, what's my thoughts about White Spark local citation finder tool? Well, White Spark are a bunch of Canadians. So I like them already. Inside my company, I use Bright Local because that was the decision I felt was better for my business at the time. They're a UK-based firm. I haven't used or evaluated WhiteSpark in a couple of years, and I've got a lot of local marketing source students that use WhiteSpark and are happy. We're not big fans of tools at Local Marketing Source but it's probably divided between white spark and bright local at among my students that's about as much as i'd like to say jasmine uh, larissa says you mentioned chiropractors in one industry would be the training be applicable if i wanted to niche specifically for wedding pros um even if you didn't want to be specifically in a niche based yes larissa i mean the only difference in the strategy really uh, that, that we teach. I don't. I use a variety of different examples for different companies. Okay, uh, everything from attorneys to chiropractors to dentists to, to courier companies. We use you know, plumbers. I have electricians in a different example. When I built the course and I was using analogies of different businesses, I kept that in, in mind and and really tried to relate and demonstrate that you know it's not industry specific. The building your business side, we have two ways of of attacking that, and that's being a local a local based firm that focuses on a multitude of different local businesses or niche based. And what I can say is uh, when I built my business up uh, in the courier industry, I built it up in one specific niche. I was successful. Uh, the, there's been local marketing source students that are successful in, in both worlds. Um, our most successful LMS students are niche based, but it doesn't mean that you, you couldn't get growth in that. And when you are attacking a niche, uh, the strategies are relatively the same. You, you know, you want authoritative penetration is what I call it. Um, boy, that sounds dirty, doesn't it? Uh, but that would be going to a trade show and, and identifying who the major players are, identifying who the, you know, who controls the associations and, and networking with those people and getting the opportunity to talk on, their stages and getting your content published into their books and magazines and whatnot. Uh, Wa Wabi. Oh yeah, I guess I could post the links there, huh? Well, you know, Wabi, I'm not. I don't see myself as a high-pressure salesperson. Uh, I never have, and I never will. Um, 
you know, I put the offer out there. If you know, everybody knows you're part of local marketing source. You're on my, on my, uh, my lists. So if you guys want to buy, you'll go ahead and buy and check it out. But I'm not here to have a high closing rate and have a high refund rate either. You know, no, this is not a one-time offer. This deal is going to be available for you tomorrow. Let's face it. But if you want to grow and you want to better your business, you've got to get education. I mean, I speak at these these events, and I'm going to the local search summit just to sharpen my axe. I'm constantly getting educated. I'm constantly reading and learning. So if you're not involved, if you're involved in Internet marketing today and you are not involved and committed to other education at this point in time, you are not bettering yourself by not taking up on this offer. Spending 97 bucks right now just to get in, to get some value, you're going to be blown away at the access of information that's in there, and that's going to help your business, whether you're established or not. Um, Jeff, I just copied. I see Jeff saying here he wants to sign up. You know, Send me a link to sign up at... Uh, He's got his, his, his link there. I put the link into the questions box uh, that you can sign up and you can click that link. I will also, just because you asked, I will make note of it and send you a link. No, I don't want that. Why did they just make it so hard to open up Word? All right, Jeff is I have an appointment now. That's why. All right, um, Robert. Besides the local search summit, can you recommend any other events? SMX. Uh, SMX is is good. Um, Yeah, Wetly. This is the uh, this is the same same content. Uh, Wetly. If you want to send me an email, uh, feel free to send me an email. If you're ready to sign up, send me an email. And we'll take care of that for you. Any more questions, guys? Oh. Lex is saying, do you have a path through the LMS content to help get away from drinking from a fire hydrant? I know what that's like. Um, my content is like drinking from a fire hydrant. Uh, Lex, send me an email, um, whether through the uh, private Facebook group or, or direct email, with this question. Um, these are some of the reasons why we spend the 30 minutes up front. There is a lot of content. And it's almost impossible for me to create direct paths. I tried it. I spent several days creating a syllabus. And I identified and segmented the local marketing source audience into four different major groups. Those are people that have sales experience but no internet marketing experience that are an existing agency to somebody that has internet marketing experience and no sales experience to somebody that has a little combination of both. And those were the four types of students that we were getting. And I created the full syllabus path with, with all, the, all the course, all the course numbers, links to all the transcripts and whatnot. But that was a document that we decided not to publish. Uh, it was one of these, one piece of content that I created that put a lot of work into it that has never ever been used and that's just the way the world works. Um, but that piece of content does help uh, in addition to the 30 minute call up front. Uh, once I can understand where you're at, I can definitely help guide you through the content and then walk you through it again on the uh, on the Facebook group. 
So yes, I do have something. No, it's not published, but yes, you can get it just by contacting me directly in addition to private consulting to get through it. I hope that helps. Thanks, JJ. You have a good week as well. I appreciate it. Uh, Wentley, um, well, anybody that's left on the line, my email address is scottg at localmarketingsource.com. I just sent it to everyone. See, I got a few emails that have come in. A few of you have already signed up. That's good. That's exciting. Sounds like Wentley's going to go ahead and sign up. Good. Well, I am going to go ahead and end this call. I hope you guys got some value today. I hope you guys learned something. Um, and feel free to reach out and say hello. And don't forget to subscribe to our weekly podcasts on iTunes as well as our channel on YouTube. Yeah, because I'm, I'm doing real videos now soon. I'm, I'm, I'm all set up, not just audio. That means i got to shave and shower every Wednesday. <laughs> Some people are like, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I've, I've been up, I've been traveling a lot this summer, doing a lot of camping. All right. I will end this call, guys. Have a good one. All right. Bye for now. Well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.